Hey guys, TJ here with Tough Deck Cards and Games. They have got a water slash mermail, Atlanteans, whatever you want to call it, deck profile for you. Uh, basically, this deck just functions around uh, the introduction of Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince, which came out fairly recently in Bosch. Uh, it's a deck that has seen considerable success. Uh, it's gotten a lot of work put in on it by several people. Uh, uh, I recorded a video for this a while ago that I never got a chance to upload because the Monarch deck came out and I figured the deck needed kind of tweaked a little bit to interact with that stuff. Uh, and I made a couple of slight, slight changes that uh, have helped improve my win rate a little bit in those matchups. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of make sure the video was, or the deck list was as up to date as possible and I was able to kind of give you guys the best impression of what this deck does. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to uh, a couple people just on Dolus Grounds in general, the water discussion thread. Uh, it's really helped me with a lot of ideas. Uh, specifically, one post uh, by Matthew Monahan, I don't know, a couple weeks ago or something, when uh, he first gave me the idea to try Tias in this deck, which has been a huge success. So I'll just get into the list. We'll talk about some choices. First off, we have three copies of Gen X Undyne. Uh, basically, Atlantean Dragoons is the deck, so we want to play as many cards as we can to make sure we see it. Uh, and Undyne is a card that can dump Dragoons whenever we need them to. Uh, along with that, we have three copies of Neptibus. Uh, this card just does what Undyne does better, really. It dumps an Atlantean from our deck, adds one to our hand. So we get to dump a Dragoons, add another Atlantean to our hand, and it has an additional effect when it's used for the cost of a water monster that's going to let us special summon back uh, an Atlantean from our graveyard. So it's not unheard of to, you know, dump Dragoons, add Dragoons and, you know, then sacrifice this, special summon Dragoons back, and over the course of one turn, get off something like three Dragoon searches, maybe more. Uh, to go along with that, we have a couple more Atlanteans. We have three copies of Heavy Infantry. The format is very focused on face-up cards right now, uh, both Monarchs and Pendulums. Really put all their cards face-up, all their eggs, and, you know, one obvious basket, and you just have to deal with what's showing. Uh, two copies of Dragoons, because we can't possibly play three copies, it's just not allowed. But we do have two of them, and it is just the linchpin of our deck. And then one copy of Marksman, so we have a little bit more variety in what we can do with our Atlantean effects. Uh, we do have the ability to pop back rows if there's something like a Solemn Strike we need to deal with. Uh, additionally, we just have a level 3 monster to get off of Deep Sea Diva or to add to our hand with Neptibus. And this card does a surprising amount of damage off like a Diva Summon if you still have a Dragoons in your deck. Next up we have our Mermails. We have three copies of Abyssius. Uh, TS is really useful actually to be proactive in this deck to help just discard cards and deal with our opponent's boards uh, Also in making a rank 7 Which can be fairly powerful uh, TS has two targets that it can search for in the deck. We have one copy of gun and one copy of pike uh, These cards are just both okay pikes very average, but it's uh, it serves a very defined purpose in this deck letting us get multiple uh, destruction effects off without committing any real resources uh, as well as being able to search out Abyss Gund on its own. And Gund is very useful since we're playing a copy of Megalo and a copy of Lead. Uh, a lot of lists you see for this deck play three Megalos, which is just wholeheartedly unnecessary since if this deck is working, it's resolving Dragoon searches. And if you're resolving Dragoon searches, you can add Megalo to your hand easily. You don't need a bunch of copies of Megalo since you're always going to be able to search. And in that situation, I would rather have a hand of Megalo lead than double Megalo since with Gun, we can get the lead into play. Uh, with several different hands, it's correct to just discard three and summon the, the lead. Uh, and I just like lead. It's... Extra damage, or not extra damage, but extra attack for dealing with bigger bodies. Uh, and an additional discard can be very relevant. Uh, the two cards that really make this deck function uh, in such a broken way are Deep Sea Diva and Moulin Glacia. Uh, Diva has just, you know, a summon Diva one card combo that puts Moulin into play, as well as a Synchro, which is very powerful. Uh, Moulin is just very free to search, free 2800 damage, free discard two cards. Everything this deck could ask for. Uh, we have a couple of hand traps. We have two copies of Maxi and one copy of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Uh, I had three spots for hand traps, and I definitely wanted to play some Maxis. Uh, but an additional Light Monster for Brilliant Fusion seemed very pertinent, so we have one copy of Ghost Ogre to go along with our one copy of Perform Age Trick Clown. Trick Clown is just the best thing you can dump off of Brilliant Fusion. Uh, one Garnet for our Brilliant Fusions, and one Genix Controller for our Unknowns. And our spells, we have three Upstart Goblins. It's a combo deck, we want to play 37 cards. 
for Brilliant Fusions. Double Summon is actually a very important effect in this deck, uh, to a point where earlier lists actually literally played Double Summon, but the utility you gain by having Brilliant Fusions, so you can summon like Inept Abyss and then summon Diva afterwards, or summon Undyne and summon Diva afterwards, uh, is so, so, so good. This deck goes to a, a whole new level when you have Double Summon effects, and Brilliant Fusion is just a much better card than generic Double Summon, especially when the cost of playing it is basically just playing a Garnet. Uh, Trick On's not that bad. Ghost Ogre's certainly not bad. Garnet sucks, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, next we have three Instant Fusions, which is even better in this deck than it is in most other decks, since you can make a Water Rank 4 and then Detach Dragoons to get an extra search. Uh, just a very powerful card. Helps us blast to our opponent's boards. Helps us set up plays. Uh, it's, you know, since it's usable as both a search card and a setup card, like, on board, since we can, like, get a Dweller and an, uh, an extra card to our hand, it's just so powerful. We have two copies of Forbidden Chalice. I was going to play three of these. This is one of the cards that I felt became 100% necessary after Monarchs got a little more popular, since uh, you can negate their fiends with it. But uh, I couldn't really bring myself to play three since you don't want to flood out on them. Uh, if you open a bunch of chalices, your hand doesn't really do anything. So I felt that two was enough when combined with uh, Marksman's to deal with most things, though Marksman isn't going to get over a Majesty's Fiend. You can run into Majesty's Fiend with something like... No, not a whole lot of things, actually, in this deck list, but... Yeah, it's it's not a perfect solution, but if you play too many Chalices, you can brick on them. Uh, it might be a three of. It might just be necessary that you play all three, but... Right now, we're sticking to two. Then we have one copy of One for One. It's basically just a better double summon. We discard a monster, get to special summon Net the Abyss, and then we can normal summon whatever we search. And one Abyss Scale Mizuchi. Uh, it's for Megalo. Megalo searches it up, gets extra attack, helps us OTK faster, and it can sort of put our Pendulum opponents down an extra card since they need to burn a Pendulum spell to make this go away. Uh, in our extra deck, we have Trishula. Uh, I'm not really going to pass up opportunities to summon Trish. This card is just so strong. Cyframe Omega. Uh, Omega, uh, a hand of Brilliant Fusion and Atlantean Dragoons makes Omega and discards three cards from our opponent's hand. Well, it discards two plus the Omega, which is really good. Uh, we have a level seven Synchro and Meteor Burst Dragon. Uh, this is important for a number of reasons. One, if you get Max Seed against Pendulums, you just have to kill them, and this is the best card to do that with. Uh, you also just need a level seven Synchro to make. Uh, we also just needed a level six, so I have a Virgil. Uh, this could be a number of things. The Meteor Burst could also be Gungner. This could be like Deloren. Uh, we have Herald of Arclight, which is another card that lets us OTK our opponent through Damage Juggler, as well as setting up a, an extra like negation if we can't kill them, but can discard a bunch of their cards. And Tetsunoko, which is just the key combo piece in order to set those plays up. Uh, for Xyz, we have two copies of Abyss Dweller. Uh, Dweller is useful in this deck as just a card you summon and detach in order to get a search off, so having an extra copy to use for the pump effect and to shut off our opponent's graveyard is relevant. Uh, we also have a copy of 101 Honor Arc in this deck to deal with our opponent's monsters while still giving us our search from Dragoons. We do also have a Diamond Direwolf to pop other problem cards if they're not monsters or if we've already used our Honor Arc or just don't have a Dragoons to use. Uh, we have that Gusto Emerald as well to modulate our graveyard as well as make sure we have enough copies of all our different extra deck cards. Uh, additionally, we play a number of normal monsters, so this can actually have some interesting utility. Uh, one copy of Mermail and Biscayos. Uh, Gaius with Mizuchi is just great. Gaius with a Dweller up is just great. Like, he's just gigantic then, shuts off your opponent's attacks from a lot of different monsters. Uh, and the other rank 7s didn't really seem good enough right now, so we just play Gaius. Then we have two copies of Norden, which I'm not necessarily sure is correct since games don't really go on long enough for you to use two copies normally. But if you open double instant fusion and don't, you know, just kill your opponent on the first turn, you'll be happy you had two. Uh, not necessarily sure that that's where we need to be, but i um, also not positive what else we would use. Uh, we have Gem Knights for Aphanite as our last thing, obviously. Uh, the other extra deck cards that I've used, I mean, you could play like more rank sevens, Draco Sack and Big Eye both don't suck. Um, Bahamut Shark and Abyss Trite also are both pretty good, but uh, that play has never actually been relevant for me because my opponent, like your your games need to end. You can't summon a Bahamut Shark, get Abyss Trite, and just hope your opponent can't like grind through it because they can't. They're just going to go off. They don't, they don't care. So it just didn't seem good enough in theory. Uh, so that's where this is sitting right now, though. Uh, this is probably a bit outdated, I guess, as a concept by now. People are pretty familiar with the deck. Like I said, I 
recorded the video, had it ready to upload before the Monarch decks came out and realized the deck needed to be updated for the Monarch decks. So hopefully this is still useful now uh, and you guys have a reason to care about Mermails. I love this deck. I actually am playing this over Pepe if I go to any events, though. I probably won't. If I end up anywhere, it'll probably be as a vendor. But if I get to play in anything, I'm playing Mermails because I'm just in love with this deck. It's so much fun to play. Uh, it does so many cool things. And you just get to play such a cool deck. So this is one of my favorite decks in the format. Uh, I hope you guys have some interest in it. Uh, if you have any questions about how to play the deck, any combos or anything, let me know down below. Uh, I'd be more than happy to walk you through the steps of doing a couple different things with the deck, like the Diva combo, killing your opponent by someone like with just Neptibus and like an extra water monster in your hand or something, and uh, the Brilliant Fusion Dragoon's play. So if you have any questions about any of the combos, let me know down below. Uh, if you have any questions about the deck, sideboarding, whatever, let me know. I'm always happy to talk about the deck, and we'll have plenty more content coming soon. If you guys are interested in seeing gameplay videos, by the way, for this or any of the other decks I do deck profiles on, let me know in the comments, because I never know what decks to play with. Uh, a lot of people, like when I've done gameplays in the past, have gotten irritated at gameplays with just meta decks, so... I'm never sure what to do, because then if I do a video with, like, Medolce's right now, I'll get people complaining that that's not a real deck. But if I do Pepe matchups, or mirrors, especially Pepe mirrors, people will be like, well, why do I want to see this? I can see that anywhere else. So, I know there's no pleasing everyone, but let me know what you guys are interested, since, you know, that's what I'm here for. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.